Hi everyone, David here from Beyond EV, and this is going to be the first episode of BYD Bulletin, a semi-regular news segment I'm going to be introducing to the channel, which will be in a bit of a simpler format, and that'll allow me to keep you guys up to date with everything around BYD, both in Australia and around the world, that doesn't necessarily require a production heavy video such as the four I've put up already on the channel. I'd like to be able to do a lot more of those videos and I will in the future for important topics but simple news articles and things like that it's just way too labor intensive to keep up and not sustainable so if I kept that up I'd probably burn out very quickly so I figured this would be a much easier and quicker way to bring important updates to you and hopefully I'll be able to upload maybe one of these every week or every couple of weeks to keep everyone up to date. So without further ado, here's the first episode of BYD Bulletin. So first cab off the rank, I wanna go through the new BYD ePlatform 3.0 Evo that has just started coming out on cars in China. The current platform, the ePlatform 3.0, is BYD's electric vehicle platform, and it's actually used on the electric vehicles we get here in Australia right now, the Seal, the Addo 3, and the Dolphin. What makes this platform different from what you get from other manufacturers is that BYD makes everything in-house, and they integrate different modules together onto the one single platform. So for BYD, they call it the 8-in-1 platform, where eight separate modules are integrated together and manufactured together onto this one platform, and then it can be scaled up or down for various different car classes such as little hatchbacks, SUVs and sedans. Platform 3.0 Evo is the next generation of that platform. It's started coming out on cars that have been released just recently in China and this platform BYD is calling the 12-in-1 platform so what effectively has happened is they've added four extra modules to that integration platform and that's all manufactured together to keep costs down. Now, one thing that caught my eye is the electric motor that this new Evo platform is going to be powering in cars that come out with it going forward. So this has been said by BYD, but the new electric motor on the ePlatform 3.0 Evo platform, they've said is going to be the world's fastest mass produced electric motor available in an electric vehicle in the world. Now to put this into perspective, the Tesla Model S Plaid, which is getting manufactured now out of the United States, the electric motor in that car is capable of spinning it up to 20,000 RPM. The new electric motor that'll be coming with the BYD ePlatform 3.0 Evo, that motor is able to spin it up to 23,000 RPM. That's phenomenal. You can get an SUV sometime in the future that will have an electric motor in it that can spin faster than a Tesla Model S Plaid. Now, I'm not sure if you know how electric vehicle motors work. You don't utilize all of that RPM. They spin incredibly fast, but the motor drives a bunch of reduction gears in the back end of the car, and that in turn then turns the wheels at a slower RPM. The reduction gears in the back of a car, it's, it's very similar to like a differential. So the motor drives a differential, which then turns the wheels. So you, you don't get the full 23,000 RPM, but you would have seen some reports on a refreshed BYD seal that's been spotted around China. And that has been announced as being able to travel at a top speed of 240 kilometers an hour. That's because of that new motor. Would we see a vehicle with that platform in Australia anytime soon? Probably not. Not sure if the new BYD Sea Lion 7 will come out with that. I think they've actually just released the new Song Plus in China with that platform. For those who don't know, the BYD Sea Lion 7 is called the Song Plus in China. I don't think we'd get the one with the new Evo platform, but. There's no confirmation, there's no specs or anything like that. We just have to wait and see. As for the refresh seal, the current seal was released, what, October 2023 or announced in October 2023. Would we see it by this October? Probably not, but who knows? I would say probably early 2025 before we started seeing that new Evo platform in cars here in Australia. In the next story, I came across a post of a gentleman who happened to be at a port in Shenzhen earlier this week. And at that port was hundreds 
possibly even thousands of BYD cars waiting to get dispatched, roll on onto a ship and then get shipped out to various countries around the world. One thing they did notice, it wasn't just one destination either. These were going to Europe, Australia, all over the place. One thing they did notice is that Australia's, or cars destined for Australia in particular, had very stringent fumigation and decontamination protocols that they had to follow compared to some of the other countries that these cars were going to. Australia's was noticeably more intensive, uh, which I guess is a good thing to hear. They're taking things seriously and rest assured that the, follow, uh, the correct protocols, quarantine protocols are being followed on their end, which is good to hear. But amongst all these cars, he saw a bunch of seals, a whole heap of dolphins going here, there and everywhere. But there was one car in particular that stood out and it was this car here. And it was just sitting amongst all the other cars, completely wrapped in camouflage. But as you can tell by the shape of it, that appears to be a van. A camouflaged van amongst thousands of BYD vehicles, you would have to say that that may actually be a BYD van. Now, according to the poster, this is headed for Rotterdam, I'm assuming for road testing over in the Netherlands and around Europe, but up until this point, I, I know that BYD have done vans in the past, but I hadn't heard one in development up until seeing this picture. So. Yeah, take a look at it. You can see here, it's definitely going to be a commercial van. If you look closely behind the driver's seat, you can see a bulkhead, which separates the rear compartment. Very flat windshield coming straight down, very large aperture for that windshield too. One thing to note is if you look closely at the headlights, they seem to be halogen headlights. The Well, they could be fog lights, but th that bottom light is definitely halogen and the top one looks like a projector LED. And there's no headlight cover or assembly cover there. there. It looks like they've just taken that out to not give away, I guess, the design element. That bottom grille that you see across the bottom, that looks somewhat familiar to the likes of, say, the Sea Lion 6. But aside from that, being a van, there's not much else you can really draw comparisons to in regards to other BYD offerings. I wish I could see what was on that piece of paper. He did actually take a photo of that same piece of paper on another car, and it actually shows you the name of it, but he wasn't able to actually get a close-up photo of this one, so I can't catch a name. All he knew is that it was headed to Rotterdam, which is what is on that piece of paper. So if I've got any viewers here out in the Netherlands, keep your eyes peeled. See if there's a van that looks exactly like this driving around sometime in the next month or two. Be interesting to see what type of car it is. Is it an EV or is it a DMI plug-in hybrid coming out of BYD? My inclination would be that it would be a plug-in hybrid, particularly if it's aimed at the commercial market. I don't think they're... I, EVs would be great, but the amount of payload that would need to be carried in some of these cars, you wouldn't want to limit that. It might hurt sales, which is where a plug-in hybrid would be more suitable in that application until the technology advances and, you know, EV batteries become lighter, more energy dense, and you can take away some of the weight of the battery and put that towards payload instead. Who knows, this one might actually be an EV. I don't know, I'm completely guessing. There's nothing here to indicate it's either one or the other except for the air vents down the bottom. Funnily enough, those look very, very small. Too small for a radiator vent. So maybe this is an EV and those vents are for the air conditioning. Otherwise, it could just be the air intake for the radiator, who knows? Hard to say, but an interesting thing to catch that BYD may possibly be working on a van, which we may very well see here on our shores one day. And lastly, just to cover off, if you follow a few of the social media groups, you might have noticed that there's been a few shark sightings in Australia as of late. You're gonna need a bigger boat. And I'm not talking of the marine type, I'm talking of the automotive type. The BYD shark has been spotted in camouflage on road tests around, I believe, Victoria. It's been spotted actually all around the state by the sounds of things. It's it's definitely getting put through the paces uh, before their initial release. Um, in addition to the shark, there's also been a few sea lion sightings as well. Oh. 
again, of the automotive type. Sea Lion 7, the one we haven't seen, which is basically the pure EV version of the Sea Lion 6 that we can get right now. So it's getting driven around a lot. They're really putting it through its paces by the looks of things. Now, I actually spoke to a BYD representative today and tried to ask them for any updates on the Shark or the Sea Lion 7 when we're likely to see them. Still no updates yet. They're just been told the same thing that we've been told towards the end of 2024. I asked them if there's going to be any, you know, media release dates or anything like that, you know, major announcements. And they said, no, nah, nothing yet. Nothing's been announced. Now, I did recall hearing previously that at one stage they were aiming for end of August, start of September. I mean, he wasn't able to confirm that, the person I was speaking with, but he just said, end of 2024, before the end of 2024. But look, if it's getting put through its paces and it ticks all the boxes, do I reckon it will be end of August, start of September? Probably not. I think that might be a little bit too optimistic. October or, um, yeah, probably October actually. I mean, they still got to get orders for it and they've still got to put it on the website. So I would say it would take another couple of months to get that actually on the ground in showrooms in Australia. But look, let's wait and see. They might actually hit showrooms early and you rock up and you're looking to buy a Sea Lion 6 and bang a Sea Lion 7 sitting right there that you can buy straight off the lot. Who knows? Anyway, that's where we're at today for this BYD Bulletin. Thanks for joining me tonight. If you have any rumors or any news that you're aware of, please let me know in the comments. I'll look into it and it might be something that I pop on the next bulletin. But that's it for now. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.